Yes, it's true. Elizabeth Holmes has a dog. There's been a lot of rumors swirling around about Elizabeth Holmes when her company was truly falling apart, which it finally did. Instead of weeping and mourning or feeling bad or figuring out what to do, she went out and bought a dog. Um, she named the dog Balto. And he was named after a famous dog who was a sled dog who pulled this you know, dog sled through hundreds of miles of ice and snow to bring, um, I think, antibiotics to a remote village uh, to prevent a diphtheria epidemic. So this dog literally saved this village. And everybody was crazy about Balto, and there's a stuffed Balto in a museum somewhere. Well, I was going to try the next one. <laughs> Here they are. The only trouble with the Balto story is like, as with so many other things with Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes, it's not true. Um, Balto was merely the dog who completed the last leg of the journey. He happened to have the drugs on him. Now the other dogs had taken all the arduous part of the journey, hundreds of miles. And Balto was kind of the last one and they kind of got him all gussied up because he was a good looking dog and he had a good sounding name. And the press, as they do now, the press jumped on it and made Balto into the hero. So now Elizabeth Holmes has a Balto. Let me just go back to Balto here. I only have one picture of him, but it sure is nice. And he is a nice looking husky. But you know, Elizabeth did not housebreak this dog. She would walk him up and down the corridors, the almost empty corridors of Theranos. Um, and he wasn't housebroken. So he'd pee on the walls and poop in the corner. And it's completely irresponsible to own a dog and to treat it like that because that means the dog is not socialized and that's not fair to the dog never mind the owners it's not respectful to anybody but it, it's typical of the B slash slash CH that she is she's the one who's really the bitch so anyway here she is at the she's with her, <coughs> her new bow I could not believe this was her but it is her She's at the Burning Man Festival, which is one of those upscale things. I don't know, some event out in the desert where everybody romps around and makes fools of themselves and it's very expensive and there's some kind of arcane code going on and you know it's sort of like a weird version of Woodstock. And there she is with him. And that's really that really is her. I don't know if I can get in any closer. Yeah, that's her. Hi Elizabeth, how are you? She's smiling away. It would be more appropriate for her to be worrying about her future. The future of the company, the non-existence of the company, or perhaps the lawsuits, plural, that she'll be facing very soon, and the other people who are probably going to sue her. This could drag out for years and look at what she's doing. Now everyone can say, oh my goodness, isn't she being positive? You know, our culture has a lot to do with, puts a lot of emphasis on positivity. I think if you're positive in a situation like this, then you're, you're, you're kind of out of your mind, you know? Um, fire is raining down in your head and you're dancing around with your dog and it was a phony name anyway and you've got this boyfriend who's like wait a minute where did he come from the whole thing is bizarre in the extreme but I think it's just another escape hatch for her she's just doing another number on people it's been going on for years now I tried to do a sort of essay on a um, an interview she did and I got so tangled up I couldn't really couldn't do it anymore. It was impossible. She's a very strange person. I'm glad I don't know her. I you know, I asked myself, does she have anybody left on her side? Well, apparently, she has a lot of well wishers. She's because she's sort of a renegade figure and everybody hates her, well, now they're starting to like her again. She's got fans um, building. 
It's so crazy. And that happens. You know, men on death row, they get love letters from women every single day. It doesn't matter what they've done. The worse the crime, the more letters they get. And they get married, these guys. And the women know that they're guilty. It's, it's a distressing part of the human condition that we lift people up and rip them down, but there's no conscience here. This is what scares me so much. This woman, she's got no bloody conscience. You know, I'm gonna try to find that YouTube video. Yeah, it'll take me a second. In the meantime, you can look at my wonderful family. Everything's a bit slow on my computer, but If it would just go the way I want it to go. Any samples of way to engage people and access the location. I'm gonna try this. Or a way to engage people to fully influence all the things they want to do or the changes they want to see. And so from a listen to the husky age, voice, it's an extreme here. Thinking, uh, about about that path. I'm talking about early age. This is uh, many of you know I'm a literature professor, and this is a young lady who read the whole of Herman Melville's Moby Dick at the age of nine, which in itself is a pretty colossal feat. She says. Um, so there was something stirring in you. And that's fiction. On, and as I understand it, uh, she's a fiction don't writer. Get into too much literature because we're both fans of Jane Austen. I said we could do a the guy's whole hour facial expression. Of Jane Austen. Yeah, that's good. Oh my but God. when you went off to school. Your dad gave you Marcus Aurelius. This was the last <laughs> mention, perhaps, Marcus Aurelius. He doesn't know him, know him from a hole um, in the ground. It had an effect. And at that point, I believe, you had already started dealing with Chinese universities. You had, as a high school student, you were fluent in Mandarin at that point. All of that kind of... We'll call Let me say this about that. Areas. Let me say this about... Really pretty much visiting you. I'm trying to make that stop. Is that still going? Let me say this about that. Yeah, this is really wild. Anyway, I'll try. Um, one former Theranos employee reached out to me to recount how small and petty her lies could be. This person suggested that Holmes' comment about being able to quote Jane Austen in a New Yorker profile was nonsense. In public, Holmes often attempted to appear well-read and scholarly in a dreary New England sort of way. Despite her single year of college, she touted the titles of works of philosophy that she had absorbed. According to this former employee, however, it was all fiction. Colleagues who questioned her about the canon found that Holmes' intellect was mostly superficial. For this person, it was a harbinger of what was to come. How is it that you remember every word of Jane Austen, but you say, I don't remember 600 times during a deposition? I'm sure I do not know.